up against a team that they fought tooth and nail twice this year, once a double overtime loss on a last second shot, the other one they were right there, and if they can somehow get to that uh, game and have it all on the line Saturday night, it's going to be a phenomenal experience here for the, those young athletes as well as the fans that made the trek over here and anybody watching it on ESPNU. Yeah, and, and you know, on top of that too, there's uh, right now in the men's side of the bracket, the four or five seeds playing UVU and UMKC, and they're one point apart. I'm looking in that direction because it's up on the monitor here on the concourse. Uh, and, and that's a uh, that's a one-point game. And Kansas City played uh, New Mexico State tough twice. It was one-point games each time that New Mexico State won. So, I mean, you look at that side of the bracket too and go, it's not a foredrawn conclusion as well as close as some of those games that have been played this well, year. Well, you know, once you get into these situations, crazy things can happen. And, um, you know, frankly, uh, my impression in New Mexico State is that um, as good as they've been the last few years, and they have the best player in the league, the most dominant big man in the league, uh, Baker as a guard is very good, they're not the same level no. that they've been in the past, which opens the door for other people. And Bakersfield is stronger, in my opinion, the strongest Division One they've had since they've been a Division One program. I don't think there's any question about that. So, you know, the stars align up that way. That being said, they've got to get by Chicago State tonight, and then they've got to wade through whoever uh, whoever gets through tonight in the semifinals tomorrow. Talk about Chicago State real quick. Fred Sims Jr. leads the way, 11 points a game. This is a team that kind of had some issues, though, uh, internally. They lost scorer Kieran Woods. This is a guy who was a pretty good scorer, but he had some issues with teammates, and uh, matter of fact, got into a fight after the game with a teammate. So he wasn't on the team anymore, and he was a guy who gave the runners some fits the first time around in Chicago in that victory that Bakersfield won 67-56. Uh, he wasn't around the second time around. Runners ran away with it in Bakersfield 71 to 48 so it's a team comes in they, they're averaging about 67 points a game they're allowing 77 which in this league is absolutely huge yes. they're shooting 39 percent from the field 30 percent from beyond the arc but they allow opponents to shoot 45 percent and the Roadrunners have been shooting the ball very well but Ali Ahmed in both the games against the runners have been uh, has over 20 points so obviously for CSUB they're going to pound it down low tonight well and that's it starts there because you do that it opens everything else up and uh, you know so I, again, first time, you know, we saw that last night for the women's game. You know, the first time you're in an arena, first time you're in a tournament setting for this year, you do have Bakersfield as an experienced team. A lot of these guys have been through the wars of, in this WAC tournament the last two or three yeah. years. But at the same time, it's the first one this year. And it is a little bit of a different setting. And you saw the Cal State women last night struggle. You know, they, they kind of took control of the game about the middle of the third quarter. It took them a little while to get going. Four days after they basically blew Seattle out. Yeah. So, so you never really know kind of what you're going to get. But that being said, with Chicago State losing 18 games in a row, having one win since the middle of November, if you can get on top of them, they should fold. And then once that happens, then, then you can kind of get some playing time. You get your other players into the action, get them a little bit of game experience, and then kind of get them into the flow. And then if you need some of the backup guys over the next day or two, then they're ready to go because they have some experience. So that really, there's a lot of things that are real beneficial to this game tonight for Bakersfield. And if, again, if they can take care of business and at least get comfortably ahead, they're going to be able to really benefit themselves without getting themselves worn out. And what you don't want to do is let Chicago State hang around. Then you got to really scramble to win the thing. And, yeah. uh, and God forbid you lose one, then, hey, the season's over, uh, you know, at least for the NCAA hopes. And, yeah. Uh, so, you know, that, I, I, I mean, if that happened, it would be the major upset of the year if that happened tonight <laughs> in this game. It's we'll hope be much tougher going forward. Yeah, we're hoping not. Here's some of the numbers against Chicago State this year. Ali Ahmed's averaging 21 points and six and a half rebounds. He is shooting, you ready for this, 78% against <laughs> Chicago State this season. Uh, Kevin Mays actually has had a couple of low games against Chicago State, averaging five and a half points and six and a half rebounds. He's actually struggled from the field 33%. Diedrich Basil, though, averaging 13 and a half points. Damian Dern averaging nine a game against Chicago State. Jalen Arrington. Didn't play in the first meeting at Chicago State because of that concussion, but he scored 21 the second time around. But it's guys like Arrington and the other guys off the bench like Matt Smith and, and Justin Hollins that you brought it up earlier. In a tournament setting, three games in three days, those guys got to come in. They got to give you good minutes. They got to be productive. Smith has done that lately. Coach Barnes said he's as healthy as he's been all year. He's finally at 100%. I think that's a guy throughout this tournament we're going to see get more minutes, and especially tonight against the Chicago State. If you can get him in the game early and give guys a little bit of rest, uh, that could be huge the next two days. Well, Matt Smith, for any of you who haven't seen him play or at least haven't seen him very much, he's one of these scrappy guys. He's very much like Kevin Mays that yeah. way. Now, Kevin Mays has a little bit more age on him. He's a couple years older, and he's got a little more experience. But I tell you what, but Matt Smith has shown um, – 
from an athleticism point of view, I mean, you see him grab rebounds. He's got his elbow about as high as the rim. I mean, he can really get up. And, yeah. and his defense is solid as well. So, uh, you know, again, the main thing is not to burn up a lot of energy tonight. That's, you can't emphasize that enough. Uh, you know, even, um, you know, Hollins has uh, been uh, one of the great shot blockers. And, oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, again, you've, the thing is, again, you've got to get these guys some, uh, some you know, game play. Justin Pride has been playing a very strong defense. So you're going to see a lot of these players getting in the game tonight. And, you know, that's what it all comes down to. Uh, 59 blocks on the season for Hollins, by the way. That's an all-time CSB record in a single season. So very impressive that he was able to break that. And uh, for a guy who's averaging about 10 minutes a game, he's averaging two blocks a game. So that's a block every five minutes. Not too bad uh, for him on his average. I want to talk about the women's game last night. You brought it up earlier. A real close battle with Seattle until the Roadrunner sort of took control late part of the third quarter into the fourth quarter and really closed that one out. But they're playing, you know, really good basketball at the right time of the season and you look at this team and everybody contributed nicely last night and, and they're going to have a tough matchup with UT Rio Grande Valley tomorrow but I tell you they uh, you know they can they can play you know they, they can play a little bit and the runners you know here's some of the highlights from last night's game as a matter of fact uh, but everyone sort of contributing and, uh, and and able to get some some points on the board and that was key in that win over Seattle. Well they only started the game one of 10 from the field yeah. and I think they were 2 of 13 from three point range at one point and then and then the second half they played a little bit better they started hitting some of their shots they were saying all along they knew the shots would drop eventually but uh, again it was you know that's again you let Seattle hang around a little bit and and Seattle had uh, Kaylee Best one of the better guards in the league uh, got fouls three and four 20 seconds apart with about six minutes to go in the third quarter. Yeah. The backup point guard came out and immediately turned them over twice in a row for layups for Bakersfield. And all of a sudden, it, it jumped from a six-point game to a ten-point game. They called timeout. They put another point guard in. But they were not the same team with best out of the game. And that really is when Bakersfield got a separation. Their coach admitted that. To yeah. Joe and eventually talked about that. And that really was a big factor because once Bakersfield grabbed that lead up to 10-12, it was, uh, you know, it was – you know, they pretty much were able to sustain it. And, uh, and again, neither team really did a whole lot. I mean, the last uh, seven minutes of the game, nobody scored hardly any points, which is crazy to see that. So, so they, Bakersfield was actually a little vulnerable last night. And uh, their defense played well. They forced 25 turnovers. Um, and, again, they're playing well now. They've won four in a row and, and uh, six out of seven. So they've uh, – and, you know, they started that winning streak against Rio Grande Valley yeah. uh, in Bakersfield. So that's uh, – you know, they have a confidence factor there. But, uh, you know, Shanti Goff is the uh, main gun for uh, – Rio Grande Valley, the most valuable player in the WAC this year. And they're going to be, um, you know, that's going to be the big challenge. And that's Alicia Shannon's job tomorrow is to try to slow her down. Last time they played, Goff had zero points. And it was one of those things, too. They had their hands full with Chicago State last night, and they had to come back and win that one. So a lot of things can happen in March. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk to Zach Lewis. I don't know. We'll get somebody in here. We're going to talk more pregame. Roadrunners, Chicago State coming up at 430. Listen to the game on 12. 30 a.m. 98.1 FM ESPN. Watch on the WAC Digital Network. We'll be back here on Bakersfield.com live from Vegas. All right. We have a solution for any device. E-Edition is free for subscribers or just $7.99. The Bakersfield Californian. We're everywhere and anytime. Subscribe today. Bakersfield.com. got an eight-point lead now. In a fertile valley, a growing university with record enrollment and graduates serving the needs of a thriving community, a tradition of athletic excellence. Now a part of the Western Athletic Conference, CSU Bakersfield. to achieve excellence through determination and hard work. We are committed to winning from those around us. Our professors and peers. Our coaches and teammates. And our opponents. We compete with integrity. <laughs> <laughs> He's just doing it for his camera. We take pride in our communities. And believe that we can inspire others, just as they have inspired us. We may wear different colors, but we share the same purpose. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Taking pictures. 
Back in Las Vegas here at the Orleans Arena on the concourse. The arena right over there is where a uh, special edition of Roadrunner Rundown. Pre-game edition, we're getting ready for Roadrunners against Chicago State here in the first round of the Men's Basketball Western Athletic Conference Tournament. Corey Costello joined now by Zach Ewing, sports editor of the Bakersfield, California. And Jeff Evans sticking around as well. And uh, Zach, this is your second. Did you come here? No, this is your second year second now, right? Second year, yep. yep. Um, this year, though, it's got a little bit of a different feel. I mean, the, the runners, the two seed, they, they've played well this year. And... Uh, you know, they definitely come in this year as really a, a, a contender in this tournament. Yeah, I think there's more excitement around it, more expectations, and with that, maybe more pressure, too. Uh, they're expected to get by today. It would be a shock if they didn't. They're expected <laughs> to get by tomorrow. And, and then Saturday night, they're expected to give, well, we, we think New Mexico State as big of a battle as, as anybody can and, and see if they can come out on top. And so uh, that's exciting from our perspective, from a media perspective, that it's, uh, you know, there is that interest in it and there is that, that, uh, that sort of, feel to it that I mean shoot it's louder out here than it is in the arena I think with, with all your fans out here so that's impressive too that is good yeah we brought more people just to a pregame show than uh, they brought a lot of teams brought to the entire game uh, and maybe both of you can weigh in on this because you've been covering local sports for a long time where would should everything go well and and this we'll talk from a men's basketball perspective should everything go well and the runners win it on Saturday night they're going to the NCAA tournament where does that sort of rank in the hierarchy of great Bakersfield sports moments. Boy, Jeff may be better qualified <laughs> to take that than me because he's yeah, been I've here been, longer. I've been, yeah, I've been the dinosaur of the department. I've been there 36 years. Him and Sam Lynn were buddies. You know, I think, day. honestly, the, um, you know, the, I tell you what, I think a real precursor to it is last year, there was a lot of excitement when the baseball team made the NCAA yeah. baseball tournament last year. This, you know, that was probably the most exciting element of Cal State Athletics, I think, because it was the NCAA tournament and yeah. it was baseball. And I think if basketball is able to replicate that, I think it would really be, it would have to be, you know, honestly, I mean, you know, it's hard to fathom it because if you start talking about great moments, I mean, some of the, uh, some of the notable auto racing in town, you know, sure. you, you know, Jim Ryan broke the four minute mile in Bakersfield for the right. first time ever back in the sixties. And I mean, that's pretty dramatic. You know, you right. had, uh, you know, Olympians here. I mean, that's, um, but again, we're talking about a lifetime ago. We're talking about things that happened before the Cal State Bakersfield students were even born. <laughs> you know, before I'm, the school even opened. I'm trying to pull things out of the hat of <laughs> things that happened 40 and 50 years ago. Yeah. So I honestly think, you know, at least in, in recent memory, this would this would have to be the best. What I about, mean, yeah. at the very least for the last 20, 30 years. Well, what about the impact? So, you know, everything go well and should everybody on Monday go into their office and get their office pulled together and they're looking at their brackets and they look down and they see CSU Bakersfield and they're like, I mean, that would be, I think, huge for the community. Even people who don't follow basketball, but, you know, because you, know you know how the tournament pools go. People don't watch all season, and they jump into that thing. They'd be like, wow, see, SUV, did, that'd be huge. I yeah. thought you are not supposed to talk about brackets when you work for a I don't do it. I can talk about it. I just can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> just like the sports line thing. I can talk about it. I just can't bet the line. Yeah, I went and looked at the lines, by the way, over at the Westgate today. What did you, what they, did you they, see? They have uh, New Mexico State at 5-8 to eight to win the tournament. Uh -huh. CSUB is 8-5, to five, and then the field is 8-1. to one. Okay. So there's really only three choices on there, and, and New Mexico <laughs> State's the favorite, obviously, but, yeah. but uh, Bakersfield's right there. So, no, I, I, I mean, I agree. I've been in Bakersfield for eight and a half years, and I think this would rank right up there. Maybe Bakersfield High School winning a state football championship yeah. w would be there. Um, and Jeff mentioned the, the CSUB baseball team last year, BC winning a state championship, but this is on a national scale. It, you'd have Rod Barnes talking to Jay Billis on ESPNU on Monday. I mean, that's, you know, where he talks to all 65, 68 coaches. Yeah. Uh, so it would be a really cool deal, and I think, uh, I think people would really get into it next week when wherever they may happen to be, if they're playing Kansas or Kentucky or Villanova or one of those schools, and uh, everybody looks up and says, wow, that's, that's Bakersfield and CBS playing against one yeah. of the best teams in the country. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, this is one of the many tournaments going on right now. WCC wrapped up in this building on uh, Tuesday night. We got Mountain West going on down the road at Thomas and Mack Center. Uh, you got uh, the Pac-12 over the MGM Grand. So a lot of college basketball going on. But it's really nice how this whole area, the Orleans, the Orleans Arena, the Orleans Hotel, just kind of brands it. A lot of good opportunities for exposure for some of these smaller programs like CSUB and the Utah Valleys and of the world to get eyes on, on themselves because we're branded all over the hotel, the elevators, the room keys. I mean, that stuff's out there. Yeah, I mean, that's the first thing you notice. That's the first thing I noticed last year 
is they really do embrace it, and it's a quick turnaround because you mentioned that West Coast Conference game. Yeah. I think ended about nine o'clock. These guys are Tuesday animals. Night. I've seen them do it because I was here at Tuesday night one year, and I had a late night in Las Vegas, and I came back in, and these guys are tearing down the stuff. It's like two in the morning. These guys are tearing down the WCC stuff and putting our graphics up. It's it's like a NASCAR pit crew. Yeah, it's a city that never sleeps. Insert here. Right? <laughs> I mean, that's that's kind of how it is, and it it, it is really cool to see. Uh, that embrace and to see, I, I just think it's fun to see the different fans of different teams around. I mean, you've got, I, I think, University of New Mexico, not to be confused with New Mexico State, which is playing down at the Thomas and Mac. Yeah, they have some kind of a of a party here or a headquarters here because there's a bunch of those fans around. You have a bunch of different WAC fans around. You see a few Pac-12s, uh, and it's just kind of a cool conglomeration of basketball fans. And the funny thing is, too, if you watch how New Mexico State and New Mexico fans interact, New Mexico State fans are like the stepchild in the state of New Mexico. Right. And, like, the New Mexico fans literally bully them in the hotel. I've seen it happen. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hilarious. As someone who grew up it. in Albuquerque, I know what that's Yes, yeah. exactly. You should know, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty funny, and uh, the, way, the way they kind of interact with each other. And, and uh, yeah, that's so a lot of college basketball happening right now. Um, you, uh, you didn't get into la last night, so you missed a women's game, but mm -hmm. uh, a win for them. And so Jeff and I were talking about that. I mean, they seem to be playing as well as they have been all, all season long. Yeah, I mean, survive in advance, right? I mean, you, if you, you keep winning, and now there's four teams left with a chance at an NCAA tournament. Win tomorrow afternoon, and now there's two teams left, and that's, that's sort of what, where you've got to be. I don't, I, just based on what I've heard and what I saw on highlights, they weren't at their best last night maybe, but they found a way to win. They yeah. put a little run together in the second half, and they have been playing obviously much better in the second half of the year. I mean, who, who would have thought that they'd be 8-6 and six in the conference at, in December. I mean, maybe a couple people inside the locker room yeah. thought that was possible, but not, not many others. And a good run for them and uh, a good opportunity uh, to continue to advance and they'll play UTRGV, who knocked them out of it last uh, year. They'll mm -hmm. play them tomorrow. So that should be an interesting rematch there. Chicago State tonight on the men's side. We were chatting about it. Chicago State comes in kind of limping into this one. 4-27, and 0-14 in the WAC. They're a team that's got enough players that if they get really, really red hot, they could beat you. I just don't see the runners allowing them defensively right. to get really, really hot. Because this team loves to play defense, as weird as it sounds. Oh, they, no, they, they embrace it for sure. And I, I was talking about this with Lewis and Jeff last night. Is it, it, Look, is there a chance? There's always a chance. But Chicago State's won one game against the Division One team all year long. Their yeah. first three wins were against non-D1s. Uh, and they've lost, I think, 18 games in a row. And uh, they're just one of the worst teams in the country. And when you're like that, when you're in a season, and I'm not trying to be mean, but when you're in a season like that, you just want it to be over. I mean, you don't want to keep, you don't want to keep playing. You're losing every time That's out. That's true. And, yeah. and so if CSUB can get out to a 25-15 lead in the first half, a 20-10 to 10 lead, I, I think Chicago State really kind of goes through the motions the rest of the way, and, and then it becomes easy, and then, and then Rod can, can substitute freely and try to save some legs for Friday and Saturday night. If the opposite happens, and it's Chicago State that jumps out to a 10-point lead somehow, they hit, they hit three three-pointers in the first right. three all of a sudden that's going to energize those guys and that's the chance I think they have is if in the first half they get out to a lead and they say now wait a minute we got a chance to, to really give ourselves a memory here that that some good will come out of this bad season and then all of a sudden you got to kind of you know step on the snake's head so to speak and that's that's I think the concern for CSUB they got off to a good start I think they're in good shape you wrote your preview to that run today with uh, the, the 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 guys in their uh, their um, they're adopting Bakersfield no actually we well we're in Vegas, right? So I rolled the dice, um, <laughs> and we're, we're going to run it next week. Okay, um, and in sort of in hopes that that would be an NCAA tournament preview. Okay. If not, then there's another postseason tournament. I'm sure uh, that that will be in in the offing for for CSUB. But it, honestly, there just wasn't enough turnaround time for me yeah. to travel and everything else to get it done. Well, so. we'll, we'll, pre we'll preview it real quick just to say you were talking to some of the guys about mm -hmm. the impact that that not only CSUB but the Bakersfield communities had in their lives. These are guys: Ali Ahmed, Kevin Mays, Jalen Arrington. From different corners of the globe, really, Ali, Egypt, you know, Kevin, Queens, Jalen, Indiana. And then they kind of, you talked about how they embrace the community. You know, what were your thoughts on what they said in, uh, you know, in their answers to some of your questions about adopting Bakersfield as their second home? Yeah, I mean, it's striking, really. The first thing I noticed was, uh, and this is, goes back as far as last year, noticing, hey, if you look at this roster, there are not a lot of Bakersfield kids on it. There's one, and that's, well, there's two, but one, one is Kyle Ferrer, who's not playing this right. year. One is Bray Barnes who is Rod's son, who's only been in town for two years. Yeah. So, yeah, he's not really a Bakersfield guy, so to speak. Yeah. And, and there's none, nobody else is even from California. They're from all over the country, a lot from the south. Obviously, Kevin's from Queens. Jalen's from the Chicago area. So, so here they are in, in Bakersfield, a town not a lot of people know a lot about. 
and uh, they they have really embraced it. And as someone who comes from out of the area myself and has sort of made a home of Bakersfield, that that's really striking to me. And also striking is that Rod said, you know where that comes from? It's because I've adopted it as my yeah, hometown. Yeah. And so it, it starts at the top, and, and it really is kind of cool to see these guys represent their their sort of adopted hometown. Yeah, because they go out and they're representing CSUB and they or, or Bakersfield in general, and they're not even from here, you right, know. And absolutely. so there's a you, you know you put that uniform on and you're representing you know, the town. What's really neat to follow up on that because all the over the years, a lot of the successful, even the Division Two programs that had so many really good athletes. How many of them stayed in town, are right. coaching, are teaching, yeah, are members of the community? This town has adopted the Cal State athletes. For the, it hasn't just been recently. This has been going on now yeah. for 20, 30 years. If you look at all the, the number of coaches at the high school level, softball and baseball now, now the baseball people are starting to show up. And near basketball, there's a ton of people, you know, that are – you know that are that are coaching and that have had that experience. And again, this community embraced them. They, when you're, if you're an athlete here, you get some notoriety, you get some fame. If you represent everything well, that opens avenues for you. And I think that's why a lot of the people have stayed here. And that, and what you're talking about with with these three individuals is just a classic example that's just continuing the tradition. I think we say we like to say that uh, the numbers show about 60% of our athletes stay in town uh, after they graduate. But, you know, one you brought up, or one that, that happened is exactly what you're talking about, Isaiah Grayson, who played in this tournament two years ago, spent one year overseas playing basketball and said, ah, I don't want to live that life, came back, and now he's coaching at West High School because uh, he wants to be a basketball coach. So he's back in Bakersfield. He's a junior varsity coach at West, but, you know, he's coaching in this community, and he's, he's a guy from Atlanta. And uh, but he happened to, to live here and, and like it here and found a girlfriend here that always helps. See that's the <laughs> key. Yeah. That's the key. That is you a get huge a key. Girlfriend from the area, they'll stick around. So all right, we gotta we gotta take a break. Um, I don't know. We'll maybe track down Ziggy or talk to Lewis or something. We'll figure it out when we come back because we've got uh, we've got more pregame coverage. CSUB Chicago State coming up at 4:30. We're live here at the Orleans Arena. We'll be back here on Bakersfield.com. All righty. All right. Okay, we're going to just shut it down. Okay. Oh, I didn't see the. Oh, it was eight. The last time I looked, it was eight. Now it's uh, fifteen. That surprises me a little bit. Yeah, it does. I really. I mean, Kansas City was playing pretty good. Kansas City was favored. Yeah, by two. You talk about it. Coach Pope did a nice job getting athletes. He he reduced their minutes. Unsacred, unsacred one. Oh, like maybe shoot the three. Coach Pope. Coach Pope being a BYU guy, not West. He knows a little bit about athletes. I think they're not as good a matchup. Wednesday, they're not as bad a matchup for Mexico State. Cynthia, come over. Right. For some reason, I don't know if it's Harrison goes low against Kansas City. They yeah, they I don't know what it is. Or they do against Mexico State. They struggle against them. So, yeah. He creates a lot of. He gives Bakersfield problems because he goes to the line so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I noticed earlier Utah Valley was making him a fight and they weren't fouling him. And if he's not getting free throws, he's not scoring as much. I'm not calling it as tight right now either. They let, I believe the girls game last night, they were letting a lot of contact go. That would be good for CSU. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really you never know what deal it dealt your hand you're getting dealt. Yeah, for sure. And you know Menzies is not, uh, you know, they're going to start grumbling about it. Oh, for sure. Of course, keep in, in mind that uh, Valley, Tracy Dildy and uh, Rod have their own background university together. With record enrollment and graduates serving the needs of a thriving community. A tradition of athletic excellence. Yeah. Try not to embarrass ourselves. <laughs> Now a part of the Western Athletic Conference. CSU Bakersfield. This was an audible. And I guess I'll be writing, so I probably won't be part of your post game. That's fine. We'll be up here. I mean, you know, if you if you get done, come back and see if we're still up around, because we might be. So all these are Cal State people here in this group? Okay. Okay, cool. 
But, yeah, and I can kind of see the screen from here, so I'll be able to sort of see what we're doing. That one spot keeps freezing. So you're sending messages out? Oh, I sent a story in on Alyssa Shannon. I'm hoping they run it tomorrow. I sent an email out, but I haven't checked it. Should in be okay. Work. Here we go. to Roadrunner Rundown. Special edition here from the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Great job by the CSUB Spirit Squads. They're going to be here all weekend. They've done a fantastic job. We'll be back here tonight, by the way, folks. Um, right after the game, we're thinking, I don't know, 7 o'clock-ish uh, for a post-game edition here uh, on Bakersfield.com as well. We'll kind of wrap things up. We'll talk to some folks. Zach will join us when... If Jeff has time after his, uh, his massive post-game story, he'll jo join us as well. Uh, but we're talking about the Chicago State Roadrunners game coming up, and that'll be at 4.30. That game will tip off, and again, we'll do post-game here on Bakersfield.com. But uh, it's one of those interesting situations where, you know, Coach Barnes talked about it this week in his media. He said he has no additional pressure. I don't know if that's just Coach talking to the media telling you guys that, but he's saying no pressure. Our team knows what we need to do, and we're going to go out and get it done. Well, I think he's setting the tone for his guys. I don't think he wants them to feel pressure, so he's certainly yeah. not going to admit to any pressure. And, uh, and maybe that's the right way to go about it. I mean, his, his, his adage was we're building the program one step at a time. This is just another step. If this step goes well, that's great. If not, we'll just keep taking steps. And that's, that's probably the way to think about it, and that, that does lessen the pressure a little bit. Okay, well, if it doesn't go well, there's always next year. Yeah. When I look at it from an outside perspective, I say, well, you're losing Ali Ahmed. You're losing Kevin Mays. Uh, you got one year left of Jalen Arrington. you got one year left before Grand Canyon gets into the mix here and makes it more difficult to win this tournament. Uh, so you, there's really a great window of opportunity, I think, this yeah. particular year uh, for, yeah, for CSUB. Keep in mind that you know, the, 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 this is also a very, well, a very grounded team from an emotional perspective. Uh, they don't really show a lot of emotion on the court. Ali Ahmed is maybe the one guy the that one might exception. have a little, you know, if, <laughs> if he, he got a, he got a, he'll get into a little bit, but not nearly the way he did a year or two ago. Yeah. And, uh, I think that even that level-headedness and that even skill really prevents you from getting those peaks and valleys, and that's um, one thing they've been able to avoid. One of the reasons I think is real key to their success this year is the fact they've been able to sustain that level, you know, momentum and you know and not get too wrapped up one way or the other yeah. which is what exactly what coach Barnes talked yeah. about and I think it hit this team about you know we had a, our, our issues on the road early like we had been and then we did get a road win at South Dakota you know and they hadn't lost at home that year so that was kind of nice but we you know that was just a game that we found a way to close at the end but then it really kind of we flipped that switch really at UC Riverside when the team came out and just hammers Riverside defense creates turnovers and, and then like the light bulb went on the guys like well this is how we're going to win games and we go to UMKC and really took it to them. Go to Chicago State, did the same. Seattle was a big game. So you win those first three on the road, and all of a sudden this team realizes, if we play defense the way we know how to play defense, we can beat anybody. And even in the games they lost since, they still played pretty good defensively. So I think that's kind of helped them sort of level it out too, knowing that one thing we can do is we can, we can play defense. And uh, uh, Coach and I talked after the South Dakota game. That was a game that they didn't even have a shoot around or practice at that arena. They showed up and they won the game. And I said, well, that's because you, you don't need to shoot around for defense, coach. Defense, defense travels wherever you go, and that's what happened in that game. And, and I think with this team, the defense has been really is what put them, sets them apart from the rest of the league. Yeah, really, really physical team. If you look at, at per possession efficiency numbers, top 25 in the nation in, in blocks, top 25 in the nation in steals, uh, also top 25 in two-point field goal percentage defense, which means when, when the opponent tries to get close into the basket, they're very physical with them, uh, and, and all that stuff really helps. Now, they do foul a lot. Sometimes that's, the, that's yeah. the flip side of that is that you're being physical, and we talked about it in the break. If, if, if the referees are letting things go, and that seems, at least with the women's games yesterday in the first yeah. half of this game, yeah. has been the, the way things are going, I think that helps CSUB because it allows them to be a little more physical. Now, on the flip side, New Mexico State tends to play that same way, and mm -hmm. so that may help them too, as if those two teams need any more help in this <laughs> field. But that, that may be what we're looking at. Yeah, for sure, and uh, and I think defense has been really what's got them going, and, and that's allowed other guys to step up and play well, and 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 just set the tone. And, and you talked about the team kind of with their emotions too. And Coach Barnes talked about it this week, as he said, you know, this is the team that's really loose. I mean, you watch them in pregame; there's guys bouncing around, and sometimes they're singing along with the music. And mm -hmm. and Coach, in the I think in the years before, he probably would have come down on that, but he said. 
you know what, this team, when the lights come on, they put that uniform on, I don't have to worry about them. So whatever makes them feel right, and this is an old school Rod Barnes, 88 SEC player of the year, <laughs> coming out and saying, that's not my style, I'm more old school, but I'm going to let it go because that's why, what works. Why mess with success? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, when they're playing well, yeah. if they suddenly don't play well, then you crack down on it. Right. But, I mean, if they've, they've illustrated that that's, that's their, it makes them relax, makes them play better, they get out of the way and you know, let's, let's, let's let the car roll down the freeway. I'm yeah. going to get out of the way. And what Coach says a lot to these guys is just be you. Just go what you do and you do, and that defense is part of it. And I think he sets that tone, too, because when, when, when uh, there's a bad call, right, or, or what he perceives to be a bad call, of course, He's not out there screaming and shouting like a lot of coaches right. are. I know he picked up a technical at New Mexico State, which was a weird situation. But other than that, I, he seemed, even when he's upset with referees, he's got a smile on his face about it. <laughs> and that sort of is, is kind of like, man, what are you guys talking about sort, right. of, sort of attitude. But, but it's never, there never seems to be this moment of panic or being upset. And now, now, in this tournament, when it's do or die, does that come out a little bit more uh, of either him or the players? I don't know. But I, I think it, if it did, that would almost be a bad thing for CSUB. I think they want to keep that consistency that they've had all year yeah for sure and and i think you know he's i was in the, i was i'm in the training room the other day kevin mays is is kind of stretching out a little bit and, and coach conroe walks in and and kevin goes coach you know why is it that every time we'll play somebody we'll play seattle we'll play utah valley you know we got a scouting report but you don't talk about it too much you just tell us hey you know here's a couple little things about this guy but just go play defense be you he goes, but then we play New Mexico State. You guys spend 45 minutes going over the scouting report. He goes, you know how nervous that makes us? <laughs> he goes, you're, you're telling us that you think that we should be extra amped up for this game. He's like, why don't you just let us go and be us? <laughs> and, so, and so that was kind of funny. And then uh, at one point, uh, you know, Coach Conroe said, well, you know, all I really want you to do is, is if you just do me a favor and pressure Siakam. And Kevin goes, wait. Wait a second, Coach. Don't get ahead of yourself. We've got to beat Chicago State first. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Well, he's certainly given Siakam problems. I mean, there's no, no doubt about that, but Mexico State's found ways to win the game yeah. anyway. We, we got, again, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We've got two days to talk sure. about that matchup probably. Sure. But, I mean, like I said, the, the players even are going, hey, Coach, no, no, no don't, get, don't get ahead of us. We've got to handle Chicago State first. A couple matchups tonight. Fred Sim Jr., uh, Trayvon Palmer will be a couple guys that the runners are going to have to take out 11 points uh, and 9 for Palmer. Uh, Clemmy Owens is, is also averaging nine points a game, and Elliot Cole as well. But uh, really, there's not much of a post presence for Chicago State. That is what's been the difference in the first couple games. Ali Ahmed, 22 and 20 against these guys, and he's been very effective. Jalen Arrington's been effective. And so getting the ball, he, Kevin Mays actually hasn't been effective against Chicago State. He just hasn't shot very well. He's got plenty of shot attempts. So if he gets going tonight as well, I think really the post play for CSUB will be the difference maker in this one. And if they jump out early, they might be able to buy themselves a little bit of rest. Absolutely. I think that's the key is start fast, uh, play your game, and, and, and honestly, if they do that, they shouldn't have to worry very long tonight. Yeah, Chicago State and, uh, and CSUB. 4.30 is the tip-off time of that one. You can listen to it on 12.30 a.m., 98.1 FM ESPN. Uh, also, we'll have post-game. You can watch it on the WAC Digital Network, WACsports.com slash live, and we'll have post-game coverage right here on Bakersfield.com. Seven-ish tonight after the game's over. We'll be back up here on the concourse. So, uh, Zach, Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. Sure, Corey. Time to go to work? You bet. Time to go to work. <laughs> All right. Roadrunners and Did Chicago State. call this work? Yeah, I know exactly. Seriously. So, yeah. so, someone asked me, where's your wife at? I said, well, someone's got to work for a living. She's going to come in a couple days later. I said, <laughs> she, not, not both, both of us can't just. I was just talking to a Gonzaga fan the other day, and they said, you call that work? I told him, you know, yeah. you asked me what I did. I said, I'm a sports writer in Bakersfield. He goes, is that work? That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. so. My answer was, we both, can't we both can't travel around and watch basketball all day. You know, <laughs> one of us has to actually work, and she's doing it. So, all right, guys, we'll talk to you post game, Folks, we'll catch you then as well. We'll be back uh, about 7 o'clock here for post game. Remember, runners in Chicago State at 430. Thanks for joining us. This has been a special edition live from Vegas of Roadrunner Rundown. <laughs> Clear. <laughs>